Hello everyone, welcome to the IV Wave Private Networks demo on the topic of CBRS design. We will start by creating a new project. Now on the new project properties panel, you can enter your site information and customer and contact information. In our case, we'll just input John Doe and get started. As you can see by default, one floor plan and a design plan is open. We'll start by the floor plan. Now we want to import our AutoCAD file to have our building modeling set. Once you've browsed and chosen your file, the image converter panel will open. Here you can select which layer of your CAD file you want to import by simply selecting on the screen or by selecting any rows in the table on the left. I already have all my selection done. Now I want to assign materials to each layers. For door, I'll assign the door with heavy. And so on, I will choose my materials. And the last one is the column. I'll send the heavy concrete. Now I'm ready to import my CAD file. Press convert. Everything's ready for me. My walls, the image file has been set. I can press OK. And now you can see your floor plan. It is automatically centered. I like to right click and lock the size and position of my floor image. And now I'm sure it won't move. Next, I want to associate a scale to this floor plan. Now to set the scale, you go under modeling. There's a ruler. In my case, I know this is a distance of two meters. So I will go from one side to the other for the window. Right click, done. Set a two meter scale here. Now my floor plan is scaled. Next, I want to model my floor. I will choose the draw horizontal tool. I will pick the concrete material and now I can draw my floor. Go from one end to the other. By pressing and holding shift, you will only draw straight lines, which can help you to go a lot faster. Right click and press done once you're done. Now that my building modeling is done, I am ready to design my network. I will go under network design, utilize the access point placement tool, which will automatically place access points or small cells that you select. In my case, I will go ahead and select the Salona SCE4254. It has the 3.5 gigahertz LTE band and 48 assigned to it. I press OK, this is what I want. You can observe here that you can assign the TX power and the target RSSI you want to achieve with the auto placement. I want to get a little better network than minus 85. I want to go for minus 80. I run the auto placement. It has automatically placed two small cells for me. I will apply this and take a look at the results. As you can see, I have one small cell here and one here. They're differentiated by the sector number they are assigned, sector one, sector two. Now, before I get started, I need to associate a prediction area. There's two ways you can do this. You can either click the area draw, just like the horizontal material we drew, you can draw around the area where you want the, the prediction maps to run. Or you can simply use the area we already draw for the floor plan by right clicking on it and assigning the prediction area definition. 
now we are ready to run the signal strength output map. To do so, you right click on the output map on the right panel under the service you want to. The first map by default is the signal strength. Since I have separated my small cells into sectors, I want to combine the systems for this map to see what is my overall signal strength result. To run the map, simply right click on the map and select run on current plan. On checking the visibility checkbox, now we get to see the result of our design. To have a better understanding, of course, you go under the legends and you want to see your legend definition. So by default, we are using the rainbow legend uh, template. By clicking on the checkbox right next to the visibility one, we are enabling the probe and we get to see exactly what is the result at the pointed pixel. So as you can see, the result from this uh, automated placement of small cells is pretty good for what we wanted to cover, but maybe as a designer, you want to have a better coverage here. As you see, this is your weakness with the minus 95 dBm around all the corner. That's where you can get to modify your design. Maybe move the small cell here. Add another one by using the clone tool under the home ribbon. Place another one here. And now you have three small cells. Let's run the prediction again and take a look of our results. Right away, you can see it's a lot better. Most of the common areas are covered with a very good signal strength. And as a designer, I'm now satisfied with this design. And now I am ready to run other types of output maps to validate my design. Before doing so, I'd like to go back to project properties and assign my usage profile under capacity requirements. In this case, I'd like to diminish the Wi-Fi percentage usage to 0% so that I am 100% in cellular. I'll use the usage profile of an office space. And I'll have a peak number of clients of, let's say, 150 people. This will allow me to run some other maps accurately, such as best server, capacity maps, max achievable data rate map. Let's start with best server. Let's not forget to combine the system since I want to combine all the sectors together. And I'll run it again on my current plan. And now basically you get a view of the best server on your floor plan. The legend is color coded per small cell. And now let's take a look at another map. We talked about max achievable data rate. Let's take a look at that. Again, we want to set the combined system. Now that it's set, let's choose to view this and run on the current plan. Now we have a view of our, of our maximum achievable data rate. Using the checkbox on the right, we can use the probe again. In this case, we will see the max achievable data rate per area with a clear view. Now we can see that we have a low max achievable data rate in this area. We could come back and revisit our design, move the small cell, maybe add a new one, and run the maps again. And that's it for the output map examples. Another way you can view these maps and the floor is in our 3D viewer under modeling. 3D plan or 3D building if you want to view all the floors at the same time. In our case, we only have floor one. Let's take a look at the 3D plan.
So we have all our layers here. So we can even see our prediction map automatically placed on our 3D viewer. You can play with the layers you want to see, the textures, if you want the legend included or not, if you want to remove the prediction image. And this is a great way to view your design. Moreover, you can see your small cell placement and any other parts you would place on your design in the 3D viewer. Once your design is done and it's ready, and you want to give this to the engineer or the technician on site using the IvyWave mobile survey app to conduct the survey, you are ready to export the project. Under File, you go to Export, Export to IvyWave Mobile. The File Explorer window will open, and you can choose the place where you want to save your mobile file. Mobile file is now created and ready to be shared with the mobile user. Another way to share the mobile file is to simply save this project to Unity by using the Save As, Save to Server. The Save to Server configuration panel will be open. You would need a valid Unity connection, and you are now ready to save your project to Unity. Okay. Once saved to Unity, Unity will automatically generate a mobile project as well, and the mobile user can open the project from Unity on their device. And now, with the power of the demo, we're going to fast forward and we have received the IBWM file back from our mobile user and they have done a survey on it. And now we'll choose the mobile project returned to us from the mobile user. Open it and import all the changes coming in from it. Here you can see a quick resume of what will be imported. You can decide what you want to include and not include. Let's unselect the signal strength output map visibility and go to the survey tab. Under cellular tab, you can see that we have an LTE survey now. We can select this checkbox to view our survey. We need to select the KPI. In our case, let's select the RSSI. You can view your RSSI data, other measure, power measurement and quality measurements such as SNIR, got the RSRQ, RSRP. We also have the tool to run a dynamic interpolation of our survey data under prediction, others survey data interpolation. This will give a quick interpolation of the survey data. It will interpolate any power measurement and quality measurement. Furthermore, if we want to use a predictive interpolation of this data in order to create a heat map covering our whole prediction area. We have an output map for this called the interpolation signal strength map. Going under specific survey data, by default, my survey is selected. You have multiple, you want to come here and choose which one you want to select. In my case, I want to interpolate the RSSI data. I may even add the RSSI and the output map name so I can remember this is the KPI I have chosen. Okay, and now let's run the map. Now you can see the difference between the dynamic and the, and the predictive interpolation signal strength map. And with this, we'll wrap up this presentation of your IBWA private networks or CBRS designs. Thank you, everybody.